Hi, and welcome back. Two weeks ago, I had promised to increase my content and to deliver on a more consistent schedule. Well, here I am. I'm proud to present a video today that was started almost two years ago. It remained unfinished because I could no longer dedicate the time to these projects and my ability to concentrate on complex tasks such as video editing was severely compromised. At the time, Teresa was almost at the point of needing round-the-clock care and I was shutting down everything but the bare essentials to give her my full attention. Looking back now, it's hard to imagine that I was able to care for her while dealing with the effects of stress and lack of sleep on my system. I think I could make a whole series of videos on just that. I could call it something like uh, the fog of war cancer battles. I'm also finding it very hard to go on without her, but I want to carry her message on and to make her proud of me by completing the work. Please indulge me and enjoy this video. It's a bit of a love letter and a trip down memory lane that I think you'll enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my first unboxing video. Today we're going to look at a piece of ceramic that was made by a friend of my wife and I. Her name is Barbara Stone and she is a potter. We've known Babs for over 10 years, but have only had the pleasure to speak with her in person a few times which is a shame as we quite enjoy her company. I'm really doing this unboxing as it gives me an opportunity to talk about something I love and have had a lifelong interest in. My first exposure to creating ceramics was in grade school when I made a clay glazed Buddha, which I still have to this day. Then when I got my first good job, the owner was a patron of the Gardner Museum of Ceramics in Toronto. He often had me over there helping out when they needed the services of a scientific testing company or just an extra hand. He also had his own collection that I showed an interest in, especially one large part, which was all broken pottery. If you are learning about the history of pottery, broken pieces are an inexpensive way to get yourself in and they can be used to train your eye for when you find something remarkable. Now you'll know what it is. His knowledge of the history and manufacture of the pieces was quite extensive, and his enthusiasm for the subject quite magnetic. A few years down the road, I found myself back in commercial arts, which allowed me the time to frequent galleries and shows like the one of a kind, which featured the work of many potters. I always wondered why someone would pay top dollar for factory-made china when they could custom order unique pieces for the same money or even less. Years later, I found myself spending time in Stoke-on-Trent with little to do during the day. I would tour the various pottery museums and manufacturers like the Spode Ceramics Factory. There is such a huge pottery connection in this area, you could spend many years touring the history and visiting the shops. Here's a secret I learned about pottery. If it's perfect, it's not handmade. It's mass-produced. To make perfect pieces of china, you need to make a lot of them. That's how they get them all to be the same. The key to perfection is getting good at one thing at a time until you have a finely tuned factory that can turn out millions of pieces of perfect china. To do this, you have to throw away a lot of imperfect pieces. You have to have specialists who tend to every stage of the process. One person cannot do it all. I know because I used to sell them the equipment that helped them to do this. I used to go into the huge factories like American Standard and Crane that made millions of huge pieces, as well as the small table china factories. This is as much a craft as it is a technology. Human hands were at every stage of the production, marking defects and reporting back to the lab. Artists don't work like this. One person has a vision, and that person completes the vision. It's an expression of creativity, and each one is going to be unique. That's what makes me a handmade pottery lover. I love the unique bumps and recesses and non-uniformity. 
to me it's character and it's important you can see that this is a coffee maker it's an add-on to the mug I already had it's quite beautiful I like how the two pieces match and fit together look inside the funnel those bumps are there to keep the paper filter from sticking flat to the sides that's a good idea well, it looks like it's time to make a cup of coffee. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Part of the collection that was broken pottery.